Hey guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about loving like Jesus. And the truth is, it's simple. I'm convinced that it shouldn't take us our whole lives to be transformed into the image of God. But actually, we should be living our whole lives looking like Jesus. But we're going to break down all of the details in this video. All right, guys, so as you can see here, I have a PowerPoint pulled up for us so that we can look at some Bible verses up close and personal. Now, the topic of the day is actually part of a series that I'm doing. So if you want to see the other videos, you can click right here at the top right of the video and it'll take you to the playlist for this video. Now, today we have a topic verse and that verse is going to be John 17 verse 3. So let's read it and see what it says. It reads like this. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Now, if you've watched any of the other videos that I've been making, you can see that there's a theme here running through the whole Bible and that the Bible actually has a lot to say about knowing God intimately and personally and entering into a relationship with him that transforms our life. We already looked at 1 John and we've looked at some other passages as well. Today, we're going to be looking at John 17. Now, the beautiful truth is, is that we don't have to wonder what God is like. We can actually see exactly what God is like, his character, his nature, who he is, the things that he does through Jesus. And we can see that in the word. That's just not my opinion. It says in John 17, verse 6, where Jesus is praying to the Father and he says this, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Here he says, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. And what's beautiful is that that's exactly what Jesus did. He's teaching the disciples and he's showing them the way to life. But he's not just doing that. He's also revealing the father to them. And again, we can see this in John 17 verse 26. He says again, I have revealed you to them and I will continue to do so then your love for me will be in them and I will be in them. Now, this second part of, of verse 26, we're going to look at that more a little bit later in the video because that is so cool, the things that he's saying there. But again, we can see, I have revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. Now, I feel like Hebrews 1.3, it's like the nail in the coffin. It just really shows that Jesus is the representation of who the Father is, which is so important for us to understand. It says this, the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. So as we can see here, the sun, Jesus, he radiates God's own glory, expresses the very character of God. Now, it doesn't just say it in these three places over and over and over through the Bible. We can see that Jesus is the representation of the Father. But that is so important for us to understand because if we know who God is, we can be intimate with him. We can connect with him. We can be confident in our prayers. We know exactly who we're talking to. But even more than that, if we can know God's character, if we can know his nature, we can know his love. And that love can become personal to us. And so I have a question for us. How do we know the Father loves us? Like, I understand that it says that he loves us in the Bible, but how do we know that the Father loves us? Do we find that in our finances? Well, if, if we're financially prosperous, we're making good money, we're not in debt, that means that God loves us? Or maybe if we're having successful relationships, we're receiving love from our spouse, we have good friends, we have a good job. To tell you the truth, none of these things show that God loves us. None of them. Because what's fascinating is if we find God's love through these things that change, all of a sudden God's love is up for sale. And sometimes he loves me, sometimes he doesn't. And God becomes fickle. But we know through Jesus that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That even in the midst of crazy circumstances like Jesus being captured and being taken to the cross, that he's always the same. And so in 1 John 4, 9, it says something profound. 
God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. And so we can say confidently, the father loves us. God loves us. And it's not through our finances. It's not through our relationships. It's through Jesus crucified. Now I added John 17 verse 23 in here. It doesn't exactly say the same thing as 1 John 4, 9, but it once again emphasizes God's love for us. It says, I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. That is a crazy sentence that you love them as much as you love me. Now remember, this is Jesus and he's praying to the Father. He's saying out of his own mouth that the Father's love that he has for him, for him, for Jesus, the same love that, that the Father has for Jesus, he has for me and he has for you. So we never have to wonder whether or not God has affection towards us or whether he loves us. The same love that the Father has for Jesus, he has for us. And so I wrote here at the bottom of this, of this slide, the measuring stick of God's love is Christ crucified. You know, I heard a wise man say one time that no one pays a high price for something that's not worth it. You would never pay a million dollars for a $100,000 house. Just the same as you would never spend $100,000 on a million dollar house. Why? It's not worth it. It's just not worth the price. But Jesus died on the cross for you and me, that we might be saved and be enter, and enter into a relationship with him. So obviously we are extremely valuable to the Lord. To so many people, I feel like what we're talking about here, it could be seen as blasphemous or wrong. What do you mean? We're, we're worthless. We're nothing. We're just worms in the dirt. I'm telling you, the Bible doesn't teach that. Why would Jesus ever come as a man, God as a man, to die for me and you? Is it because we're such horrible sinners? No, he died so that he could remove the sin so that we could be restored to sonship. So what do we do with this amazing love that we've received from the Father? Now that we know the Father loves us, what does that mean for us? So is it possible for us to receive this love from the Father and then still be walking in frustration and bitterness? to be living in sexual immorality and be receiving this love from the Father? I would say that it's not. And 1 John definitely would agree with me. Let's look at Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2. It says something awesome. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. It's amazing. It says that we should imitate God and that we should follow the example of Christ who loved us. He offered himself as a sacrifice. And so to me, this just screams, we have the ability to be like God. He's calling us to imitate him, to follow Jesus, this self-sacrificing love that he had for mankind. Again, in John 17, verse 19, it says, And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Lastly, I want to read John 17, verse 26. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Now, we looked at this verse two slides previously. And here we're just highlighting the other part of it. It says, then your love for me will be in them. There's this beautiful connection and relationship, this back and forth relationship that is available to us by the Holy Spirit. God didn't send his son into the world just to free us from our sin so that we could be forgiven sinners. Otherwise, he would have never called us in Ephesians 5 to imitate him and to follow Jesus. Jesus said multiple times in the Gospels to his disciples and to others, follow me. That means do the things that I do, say the things that I say. It says in the Gospels, a servant isn't greater than his master, but a good servant will become just like his master. He's literally inviting us to be just like him. And so I want to give away the secret to you here. The secret to becoming like the Lord 
is simply knowing him as he is. It says in 1 John 3, 2, that we don't know what we will be like when Jesus comes back, when he appears, but we know that we will be like him for we will see him as he is. Do you hear what it's saying there? We don't know what we'll be like, but we know we'll be just like him because we see him as he is. And so I would dare to say that if we see him in clarity, we become just like him. And I think that we can see that through these verses that we've gone over. So lastly, you guys, I want to encourage you. God loves you so much. Enter into that beautiful, deep relationship with him and connect with him, talk with him, read the Bible with him and invite him into your quiet time and just speak to him. You can pray something like this. You can even pray this with me right now. God, I love you so much. Thank you for loving me first. I just want to connect with you. I feel like I can see through your word that you are so much better than I even thought you were. God, you really care about me. I can see that in your word. I want to spend time with you. I want to be with you. I want to know you more. God, will you illuminate the eyes of my heart so I can see you as you are, so that I can connect with you and I can be yours every day no matter where I go. Thank you for helping me, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Jesus name. All right, guys, if you like this kind of content, go ahead and leave a like on the video. Press that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.